Welcome to the Aftermarket Report, Sunday's edition with Vegas and Jim, September the 22nd, 2019, and we got us a little watch list we're going to go off today, and Miss Vegas, how was your weekend? Yeah, so far so good. I have to say the weather's been fantastic. I don't know how come we're getting this weather, but we ain't complaining here. So we are going to be talking to you guys about the following stocks. We're going to talk about Roku, Bazzi, ABEO, ADMA, CBS, and BA for Boeing. So let's start about Roku. So we saw the action on Roku. You know, this stock's had a rough week. Um, we know that uh, the stock tumbled over 26%. And, you know, the action on the pullback started on Wednesday. And, you know, it happened because Comcast announced that they would be offering a lease of its own streaming device player at no cost for its internet-only Zfinity customers. And then two days later, on Friday, an analyst at Pivotal Research initiated coverage of the stock with a sell rating and a target of $60 which is less than half of the price of the stock. Um, so, you know what? It's been a very rough week for Roku. Uh, you know, um, it's also, you know, it is one of the year's though biggest winners. It has tripled more than, um, you know, up to 253% year to date. And, you know, what? it's from when it bottomed last Christmas, um, it's actually quadrupled. So, I mean, there's a lot of moving parts to this Roku. So, you know, it's had a bad week, what you would say, you know, bad week actually in a good year, you know. Um, so that's kind of how I would kind of state it as well. I uh, just want to share with you that, you know, we took advantage of the pullback because, you know, when you're trading options or, you know, trading the stock, you may want to go long and short. And in this case, we bought the puts. And I uh, want to share a shout out to Jagadisham who told me, hey, look at Roku. And I'm like, oh my God, I was looking at other ones. So we called this one here, the 110 puts, <clears throat> believe it or not, those were at the time 13 cents, 15 cents. And happy to report that people did grab them. One of our members got it at, uh, he said 17 cents was his call. Um, and you know what? He was happy to sell it at 42, but let me tell you, look how high they went, Jim. I know it. It went it went a little over five fifty at the time I took the screenshot. It actually went almost as high as oh, a little over six fifty. So I gotta say, what a move from a thirteen dollar investment. Um, very easily could have sold it at even a hundred bucks. So we're not saying you know people are holding these all the way up to these highs of five fifty or more. Um, you know, because, you know, when you're up 100%, 200% on contracts that expire the same day, you know, these are lotto plays. You got to take the profits. Um, but, wow, whoever held those and took those dips on Friday, my goodness, they turned quick, cheap money into big money. Jim, over to you on Roku. Well, this was one that we were very proud of to called out when it was at $50, and it ran all the way up to 176.55. You know, I had traders talk to me, oh, yeah, man, this thing's way, way up. I mean, way up. You know, it's ready for a pullback. And, you know, I regretfully kind of said, nah, it might pull back a little and rebounce. But once the uh, news starts coming out and people pile up on it, it definitely had a real strong pullback here in the last couple of days. So we can look at it maybe going to the 200 EMA that I have here on this chart. This is a TTM trend chart with my 200 my 34 and my 9 EMA it failed the 9 and once it failed the 9 just started pulling back here in the past couple of weeks week and a half so I think the momentum can still give it a downward slide you might get a couple little bounces up you know people want to go ahead and get get on in it but I think all in all we could pull back to this lower support level and first, we did hit one of them, and that was right here. And I called this out in the room at a 111.81. That said, I think that's where this thing's going to go to Friday. And it did. It pulled back to my second support down there at 104.97, 105. And then the next two that we're going to be looking at, and then you've got a couple more on down here. But I, I don't think we'll get as 
drastic of a pullback unless that trend keeps pulling back. That's the first thing you want to watch in the morning for the trend. So our next support level that we're going to try to meet is going to be this 98.57 or maybe that 200 EMA on a yearly chart. So let's pull up the 20 day and just have a little look at how harsh this was. Just a couple weeks ago we were at 176.55 with a double top resistance right around the 172.16 area. And she pulled back pretty hard right then and kind of rebounced and created a little channel here for a week. And then Wednesday came out and had another hard sell off, tried to recap a little bit and then had another hard sell-off Friday, and this was really a hard sell-off. When I mean hard, I mean I'm talking from 134.73 all the way down to 106.90, uh, 108 at 5 at close. So we did hit that lower support at 104.27. So let's pull this back up to the, I want to pull this back up to the, oh, I'm going to pull this back up to the year. And I'm going to draw a red line where I think that next support's going to be. And that's going to be that 98.57. I'll turn that into a red line. I think we can hit that. I don't think it's going to be as drastic as it was last couple weeks. The next support's going to be right here at 92. Well, we're going to go with this red line at 98.57 and then try to see if we can hit that 200 EMA on it daily yearly and if that fails that next one's going to be right there 88.58 then I'd really start thinking about some dead cat bounces on this well can't change that can't change that there we go hmm, price I got two different price levels on here so let me erase one Move that one. Then I'll get another red line right here at the 9818. Put that red line right in there. In case you ever want to, you know, this is my extended trend line pattern that I use. History always repeats itself. So as I start to pull back, I try to look for where it consolidated or maybe we had. I pulled back and it bounced up. So you got a real strong support here at 89.18. Those are going to be your two, three supports right there. And for it to retrace and bounce up, it's got to break this resistance level of 104.97, 105 area. And then you got a gap in between that. So I don't know. We'll just have to watch it out come Monday. And that's Roku. The next one we're going to talk about is B. Bassy. Yeah, B A S I. Yeah, so you know BASI, they're you know they're drug developers. They do a lot of scientific research. They're also into instrumentation because it helps to save time and money. And uh, they look to bring new drugs to the market. And uh, this company's been around since 1974. They're in Lafayette, Indiana. And uh, I really like this one here uh, because first of all, uh, just to mention, they will be at a brain research. Uh, conference and um, they will be in Korea and they actually just started the conference yesterday and it's going to go all the way until September 25 and I believe they will be doing a presentation there as well um, so they will be focused on neuroscience um, hold on one second Jim can you pause Okay, so the reason I like um, this Bazzi stock is if you notice the actual chart and take a look, um, they have, it has a nice volume surge. It's had new 52 week highs. This is definitely overbought and uh, definitely looking to see, and I see a pocket pivot too. So definitely looking to see a continuation. Also, there is going to be earnings uh, this coming week. So you can still look to trade the stock for continuation. Uh, but obviously, you'd want to get out before the earnings come out. Um, most people don't really like holding into earnings too risky. But, Jim, tell us about what you see on that chart on BASI. It's had a heck of a run since 9-16-19, that's for sure. I mean, this sucker ran all the way from a support level of 207 up to 421. Closed at 420. 
So that's a beautiful green candle run on the daily yearly chart. So let's pull up the 20 day, get a little look at the 20 day one hour. We had a kind of, I mean, still looks strong, had a nice little 20 day chart here. That bounced off 278, held up, consolidated for a couple days, had another breakout, consolidated for almost a week and a half, and then Thursday and Friday had another breakout to 421. So I'm going to put a support level on this thing, and we're at year highs. I'm going to pull up a three-year high chart on this also, just to have just one look at the three-year, and just kind of give me an idea in case I missed something. Yeah, it's a three-year high also. The resistance that we had to break on at three years right here at 295. You see that right here on this top, and then she went ahead and pulled on back, found support at 118, which... So we're going to pull up this 20 day one more time. This I'm going to give you the supports and the resistance we got to break is going to be that 420, 421 area. I say your your low support on this thing is going to be at 384. That's what needs to hold the 384. Then you got the 395 and then the 406. So this is one you want to watch on the volume. See what trend it's going in. And resistance we need to break is going to be 421. That's going to be BASI. And the next one we're going to talk about is going to be ABEO. Yeah, so you know what? This is uh, ABEONA Therapeutics. Um, this company is very involved in G cell therapies. And uh, one of the things to mention too on this one here, they've actually engaged uh, Jeffries um, as its financial advisors. And what they're doing is they're um, consulting with them to assist them with the review of the strategic options. Uh, looks like they're looking to explore uh, different alternatives, including but not limited to potentially uh, partnering with various clinical and preclinical programs, maybe looking for a sale or a merger of the company. And they're looking to see how they can unlock the potential of those assets. Now, remember, when they do these kind of things, there is no assurance that the review that's happening right now is gonna result in the completion of any particular course of action. There's also no timeline for the completion of the review and the company does not intend to comment further unless there is a specific initiative that's approved by the board and that the review process is complete and concluded and that they've then determined that disclosure is appropriate. So again, we're not going to hear much more about this until they have something concrete to announce. So that's quite interesting about Abiona Therapeutics. Um, the other thing that's interesting to me is it had a beautiful inside day and the stock's been moving up three days in a row. Uh, so again, has some strength, definitely overbought. And Jim, can you tell us about this chart? Had a nice little breakout on this stock at 9 3 19 when that news came out of about the restructuring idea with Jeffries. So yes. it's kind of found a channel in that area and we're going to find a, a low, low support. And I'm going to put her in right around here. I think this is an area of 275. Then you got another one right here at 285. Resistance to break is going to be right here, right around the 339. And that's pretty solid. Pull up the yearly chart and have one more look at it here. Notice we had a $14 high on this chart. And it's pulled back all the way. It's pulled back two hard times and trends of over four or five months. And then we had that breakout that came out on the bottom. And I mean, that was a day, a yearly low at 146. And that next day she went ahead and bounced up and started creating some momentum. Momentum is what I like to hear. So we've got some resistances that we can get to and we've got some pullbacks that we can go to. So let's magnify this up a little bit kind of get an idea we've got your your probably your low support channel on this trade is going to be between 275 and 285 that's what needs to hold it can pull back to a low low support strong buy at 248 the resistance is and then we've got your support levels so after that 289 your next support level is going to be right here at 303 285 i mean the next support level is going to be right here at the 303 area. And right now we're at 326 after hours. And the next resistances that we need to break is going to be the top of this wick candle. 
and one of them is going to be right here at the 339 I'll pull up the 20 day now that we can see that that 339 area and then at 357 and then there's one more resistance that we got to see on here I'll go to the three month at 357 and then you got the 394 and the 429 so for right now this in a double top breakout situation here we did kind of break out from that double top and it pulled back to support level and that support again is going to be at 324 and that's where we are right here at 326 after hours or in the, that's what we closed at the low support is going to be down there at the 275 and the resistance that we need to break is going to be at the 357 area 357 if we can break past that 357 we'll get to newer highs and there's another one right here I like at 373 and then that 394 and that's ABEO keep it on watch and the next one we're going to talk about is going to be ADMA yeah so you know I just want to talk about this one here because um, if you notice Jim I sent you an article there but this article here you know this was a press release back in August and you know ADMA um, ADMA they're actually in Jersey and in Boca Raton and you know this company here um, they're very into um, biopharmaceutical company they look to manufacture and market um, uh, actually they have like three different FDA approved um, drugs for the treatment of the immune deficiencies and prevention of certain infectious diseases and uh, their mission is to market and develop plasma derived immune globulins targeted to niche patients obviously for prevention and treatment of these diseases and immune compro compromised patients um so if you notice ever since the pr came out on this they did announce the commercial relaunch and its first commercial sale of bivy gam and that was back on august 22nd if you actually take a look at that chart ever since that announcement all we've been seeing this chart do is go higher and higher and higher and higher because when that came out i mean that stock was just shy above three dollars but look where it is now um it's you know over the five and uh we can see here that it has a nice pocket pivot still has good volume and uh looks like it's ready to continue again there is earnings on this one as well coming up so keep a watch on this there's still room to trade this and so let's hear from Jim what we could potentially see um, since this to me has a beautiful, nice uptrend ever since they've made that PR back in August. This has not looked back below $3. Yep, this is a roller coaster chart if I ever saw one in here in a while. I mean, we, we, we had a yearly high of 656 with a yearly low of 208. And that happened within three months. That happened during the crash of 2000. Well, I call it the crash back when when the uh, back in 2018 at the end of the year, she went went ahead and plopped on down. And then she's had a couple good rides up. She pulls back pretty strong. She rides up. She pulls back strong. Big gap up all the way up to about 629. Pulls back strong. But here we've had a pretty nice longest probably ride up since Miss Vegas noted that that came out and it's ran all the way from that low support down here I call it I had a 313 all the way up to resistance high of 540 we closed after hours at 532 so we've got a couple supports in here excuse me for a second Excuse me, I had to sneeze. Okay. God bless you. Yeah. 494 is going to be your low support on this thing. We're just a little under five bucks. And that's going to be that 494 area. That's where I like to see it hold, because you can see, you know, we've had a couple res we've had a couple supports and we've also had some some uh, resistance area around that spot. So that 494 is going to be your low support. Your first one is going to be right down here. I'm going to say right around the 510 area. And the resistance that we need to break is going to be right at 540. If we can break at 540, we can bring it up to new highs. But we're in a spot right now where it's probably going to consolidate. You see the sideward channel here for the last week and a half. 
So if we break, the, if we're able to break that 541, look at 560, and then maybe get up here into newer highs. And I've got this pretty well lined out. Been watching it for a while, but I want to see it break that resistance of 540 and keep the momentum up and get up to 561 with a resistance high of between 585 and 594. Let's pull up the 20 day, just to have one more little look at the 20 day. You see what I mean by hard, hard resistance. I'm gonna raise that resistance up here just a little bit to 549. You had a double top, maybe a triple quadruple top right there at that 549, 550 area. So that's gonna be the one we really need to break. And that's gonna be ADMA. The next one we're gonna talk about is CVS. Okay, so now we're going to talk about CVS. I love going there, first of all, because when I go to CVS, um, I love when they give me the receipts with the discounts for the next purchase. I tell you, those points add up. Um, so CVS, I like it from an options perspective. Uh, the reason I like it, it had a nice golden cross uh, the other day. It also had a nice pocket pivot. And uh, I'm really liking the way that this chart is looking. Um, I'm looking here also, I showed Jim a screenshot of the open interest in the options for CVS. We see there is good interest, um, open interest right now in really the 6450 calls and $65 calls. Uh, the other ones are just too far out of the money, but uh, they're still reasonably priced. Uh, so definitely we'll be watching those tomorrow. And Jim, I'd like to hear some commentary on the CVS chart because it looks pretty good. Pretty yeah. healthy chart for CVS. Yeah, Health. sure enough. We got a double top. We tried to get up to uh, Friday on CVS. Double top resistance up here right around. I'm using the base of the candle at 64.84. Right now we're at 62.12 after hours, which is kind of a little... Yeah, a little support area right there at 6406 area. Pretty solid support to boot. Then we'll draw me another little trend line right in here at 6429. That's probably what we need to break. Pull back support on this trade is going to be right here at 6318. Got to determine what trend it's going to come out in the morning. If it starts to move up, it might move on up. If it starts to pull back, it could pull back to these three different support areas right here to that 200 EMA on the 20 day, which is at 62.88, 63.18. And I adjust these, you know, throughout the day. You know, like there's another little support right here at 63.41. So let's switch this around a little bit. Low solid buy, strong buy at 62.88, low, low, low. Can't live without it if it gets down to there. Third support is gonna be right here at 63.18. Second, 63.38. And at first seed, there's another one I missed right here. This first support channel is going to be between 6367 and 6387. The resistance that we need to break come out Monday if she decides to run up is going to be the 6452 to 6463 channel. Let me repeat that 6452 to 6453. And then resistance that we have to break to bring it up to new highs. You got your three other resistance areas, and that's going to be right here at the um, at the uh, 6484, 6519, with a with a really strong high up here at 6585. But we first got to try to break that 6519. Okay, that's going to be CVS, but she does look pretty good. She did have a descending channel Friday after she broke out. With that gap up and hit that high and just kind of sell off the way the market conditions were Friday, I don't blame her one bit. But everybody had their eyes on them media stocks, Roku, uh, what Netflix, uh, a couple others out there. So let's see if them pull back and let's see if this thing wants to break back up and hit that double top resistance at 54.52. And the last one we're going to talk about is going to be Boeing. My goodness, Boeing, Boeing, Boeing. I mean, you know, look at that move. I mean, Thursday, it was a high of 388.52. People seemed actually quite bullish on Boeing. 
And what happens on Friday? The stocks pull back and we see low of the day, 377.88. So talk about a drop of almost just a little over $10 from Thursday's high. Wow, Boeing. Um, definitely keep it on watch. You know, it's uh, overbought. Uh, and to me, this actually looks bullish. Um, there was some chatter on uh, TV, on uh, the news channels, uh, that they were saying that, you know, and there's an article in the, uh, I think it was the New York Times, and uh, they were saying that Boeing is not the only one to blame with regards to the fatal crashes with the 737s. They said that it also is partly caused by pilot error. So that's quite an uh, interesting statement to be so bold and say that. Um, and I actually watched uh, a gentleman, I don't even remember what his name was, but he definitely said, nope, this is a pilot error. And we're very confident about that. And I thought, And we also have, uh, with regards to Boeing too, they said that they completed the first test flight of the MQ-25. This is for the Navy SEAL. This has been a project for two years, and it looks like this is ready to be launched as well. So definitely keep Boeing on watch, because when I take a look at the Boeing uh, chart, uh, it definitely is looks overbought for sure, and it looks like it's ready for a potential uh, move on the way up. Um, definitely watching, though, watching, because Boeing sometimes is tough to trade so jim what do you think about boeing yep here's the yearly chart of boeing we did have that 446 high and then that tragic news came out about them two plane crashes and it pulled on back real hard and then also pulled back two other different times creating two other different new lows and we had to break a resistance area to get back up here into the new channel of around 376.19 well we did that last week she decided to go ahead and bounce on up, created a little resistance right there at 387.74, and then Friday had that sell-off. So let's pull up the 20-day, and we can really play off this 20-day chart. Uh, 20-day, and I also want to pull something up on the yearly that I noticed. And I'll magnify this up real fast. We did pull back and hit that 9 EMA at 377.89. So Friday's trend was definitely a sell-off, and then maybe we can retrace and start rebouncing off this ascending triangle that we had right here, and that little bitty breakout. The resistance high that we need to break is is not the top of that wick. It's going to be the top of this base right here, 386.47, 386.47. So let's pull up the 20-day chart, take another look at it. I'm finding support level, probably one of your first support levels right down here at 374.86. That's about another $3 sell-off, 374.86. Maybe running into that 200 EMA on the 20-day one hour to 371.95. And if it doesn't, I mean, that's pretty good solid pullback. It could start retracing off that pilot news that we heard, and that was on CNBC and also so our next resistance that we need to break is going to be that 381.83. That's very important. At 381.83, then that can bring you up into this new channel, which that resistance level is going to be 384.88. And that concludes Boeing, and that concludes our report. Always remember, subscribe, ring that bell for future updates. And Miss Vegas, you have anything else you'd like to contribute? Uh, no, I just want to say thanks for watching, subscribing, and I uh, have to say our room is so positive. Uh, we don't have time for any drama like other rooms that um, some people have shared with me and have commented that they love the room that's so positive. So I think that's great to be in a room with positive people that are focused and uh, looking to actually trade and uh, try to be successful. And they always say, trying to surround yourself with people that are always positive. And I think that's very important in trading and to cut out the noise, no time for childish behavior and just focus, focus, focus on uh, keeping, you know, having no egos and just keeping focused. And I have to say, very happy to connect with many other traders on social media that have the same 
values. You know, there are no ego traders and uh, they just want to help. And it's nice to see that even though everyone has sometimes their own service, um, there's still very nice people out there. And I think it's great to be part of that uh, circle. So feel free to come by and visit anytime. Love to meet you. Jim and I are here to always help. And we're always on voice and uh, always our mission is to help people. Have a great day and see you tomorrow. Also, please don't forget to re hit that little Twitter bird. Subscribe to the to I Love Stocks. Miss Vegas posts alerts in here throughout the day. We also on our website, we have the place where you can join up for the trial. And that's right here under the chat service under setup instructions. You hit that and follow in instructions and you can log into our room for a week and see if you like it or not. This is I Love Stocks. This is uh, Sunday's report, which is usually a little bit longer, more detailed than the weekday reports. Today's date, September the 22nd, 2019. And Miss Vegas and I, we love stocks.